Hi everyone. Good evening. Today we have a multifaceted person. He is none other than Veer Narayan Kulkarni. And uh, welcome uh, Veer here to this uh, show. I am truly honored and uh, I feel so grateful uh, because the kind of work you do for people around, I think it's really amazing and inspiring. Uh, so I ask you to share what all initiatives you have taken and how what's the impact that is being created to the people around. Uh, thank you, Dr. Srinidhi Garu, for inviting me here to this session. And uh, it's a great privilege to be here live with you. Uh, so um, I'm an engineer by qualification. I've done my MBA and I've worked in around 10 countries, worked with companies like Wipro and AIG in Singapore. In 2014, uh, we decided to come back and settle down in our hometown, Dharwad. And uh, since then, my intentions are to look at holistic health, holistic living. And uh, I had an organic uh, shop, a restaurant, and I would uh, I completed my Master's of Science in Yoga and I would take yoga classes. So right now what I do is I, I run an um, initiative called as Holistic Health Society, where I help holistic health coaches like yoga teachers, dietitians, physiotherapists, psychologists, Ayurveda doctors, homeopathy doctors, naturopathy doctors, Reiki healers. I help all of these people to go online, double their impact and double their incomes as well. So this is what I do right now. And we will talk about each of them as we go ahead. Sure, sure. Uh, thank you so much for actually sharing that. But I would uh, first love to know about the K2K journey before we uh, dive into those concepts. Because it's actually a very inspiring thing and a person who has to do that k2k journey that is Kashmir to Kanyakumari journey and it's using the cycle right it was cycling from Kashmir yes. to Kanyakumari yes. and it takes lots of guts the emotional strength and physical strength and uh, I just want to know more about it and how your family has supported yeah. I think your daughter and wife uh, were with me so yes. joined you right so I yes. would like to know about that yes yes it uh, it goes back um, almost 10 years ago when I was in Singapore. Um, we were working, four of uh, friends, we were having tea. And then uh, one of us suggested that we should do something that we'll remember throughout our life rather than just doing few things which we forget. And uh, we took a plain paper on that wrote that in the next five years, that is by 2018, we will do Kashmir to Kanyakumari cycling. And all of us signed on that paper and everybody forgot. So including me. And in 2022, I you know, happened to clean my house and then I found that paper and then I showed them, hey guys, uh, we had talked about this and then we wanted to do this. Uh, are you ready? Then they were a bit worried saying that, no, no, now we have grown old, we have paunch, we, have, we, we are not physically fit. Mm -hmm. But then I had this dream of doing it. So I checked with my wife, Purnima, and she was ready to accompany me in the car. And I checked with my daughter. She is in the seventh standard then a year ago. She also joined me and one of my friend Prithvi also joined me in. And uh, on 5th February 2023, we drove all the way from Harwa to Kanyakum, Kashmir uh, with the cycle loaded on the back of the car. And from Kashmir on uh, 4th of February 2023, I started cycling. And it had its own fun. Uh, we had decided not to stay at any hotel restaurant, sorry, at any hotel. So we asked people to host us so we could get uh, local, eat like local delicacies. And it was warmth staying with people in their homes. Uh, this was sponsored by Freedom from Diabetes. So every city we would stop and talk about how diabetes is reversible, how you have to change your lifestyle. And um, we would also uh, see the change in temperature like Kashmir was then zero degrees uh, by the time I came to Rajasthan it was 37 and then by the time I came to South India it was uh, hot and humid so seen multiple cultures multiple climates and uh, also I had my inner own struggle every day I had to cycle 100 kilometers yes. and at the end of the day I need to go and give a talk need to be fresh by that time 
10 hours sitting on the saddle, that small seat <laughs> was a challenge. But I trained myself for that, uh, riding 200 kilometers a day. That is when I was able to do 100 kilometers throughout the Kashmir to Kanyakumari. So it took me 41 days of 4,000, total of 4,000 kilometers of riding with my wife Purnima, my daughter Amodini and my friend Prithvi in the car supporting me and I riding this. It was a great uh, learning experience for me for the entire life. One thing that I realized and that is what helped me start Holistic Health Society. What I'm doing right now is many people came to me saying that uh, changing lifestyle has helped them reverse life, um, their diabetes. And uh, 15,000 people have benefited from Freedom from Diabetes, a Pune-based organization led by Dr. Pramod. And I was uh, working there. I've seen many people saying that just by changing small things in their life, their diabetes has reversed. So I was giving this uh, information. And then when I was seeing that a lot of holistic health coaches, like uh, yoga teachers and dietitians, they try their best. They're not able to get new customers, new clients. Uh, so the, each of them is not able to get to the other person, like the patient who wants to see a dietitian or a yoga teacher who wants to diet, see a dietitian or a dietitian looking for customers who want to improve their health. They're not able to connect with each other. So at Holistic Health Society, I help these people uh, connect with uh, people using uh, digital media tools. So that thought came uh, to my mind in the uh, Kashmir to Kanyakumari cycling trip and in fact we both are co-authors of a book called As I Can Coach and in that I have written this chapter of how the Kashmir to Kanyakumari cycling journey helped me instill that thought that uh, um, getting uh, to help holistic health coaches is what I need to do. So that's how the entire K2K journey and how it uh, uh, finally assembled with uh, Holistic Health Society is. That's amazing, uh, Vir, because um, for the cycling to happen from uh, Kashmir to Kanyakumari, that is 4,100 uh, kilometers, is it? Yes, yes. 4,100 kilometers. So it's like a very, you need a lot of physical strength. And when you told about Freedom from Diabetes uh, had sponsored you. So uh, so how had you trained yourself? Because I see in corporates, most of us are stressed we have ill health, we have that ache, this ache, like all the kind of problems around. And uh, just with that mindset, we cannot actually go and uh, jump into such things. And many people aspire to take up such challenges. But, you know, uh, when we do not do certain small things, uh, just little changes in the lifestyle, I think we cannot do such big things. So how have you trained yourself uh, health-wise, like physically, how have you trained yourself to get that strength? Very good question, Dr. Uh, it goes back uh, to 2007 when I was just 32 year old mm -hmm. and uh, I was working at Wipro, lugging around that uh, heavy laptop bag around traveling from city to city, taking uh, by road, by air. And then it had its own toll. I had a minor slip disc. And the question that I asked myself as a 32 old uh, year old person, do I want to be as a person recognized as a person with slip disc that is when i said no that's when i started um, going to svsi in bangalore mm -hmm. uh, healing myself through yoga and uh, that's when uh, i started giving prominence to my health and slowly i've been also doing this padyatra from uh, bangalore to dharmasthala which mm -hmm. is 340 kilometers so i did that for 8 years and the next uh, last 9 years i've been walking from sagar to dharmasthala which is 200 kilometers so every year when I used to do this, my body would um, be stronger to take up challenges. But cycling is a different ball game altogether uh, because the, the biggest challenge that you will have is uh, you are sitting on a small saddle seat, which is very tiny. And then uh, you are not used to sitting in that saddle and you have a lot of bumps that come on cycle and for 10 hours you need to sit on it. So you need to train your body for that. So what I did was that I joined a cycling club nearby. And they would conduct uh, these um, 200 kilometer rides. So first okay. of all, I said 200 kilometers is too much. How can I do a 200 kilometer ride? But then uh, when I looked at people, they had, they, they had done uh, 600 kilometers, right? As in they would go and uh, in, in three days, they would do 600 kilometers with bare minimum sleep and they would come back. Said, okay. Oh, this if 600 people can do, then why can't I do 200 kilometers? Then I did uh, the first time I did 200 kilometers it was very, very painful. 
I was just tossing on the bed the whole night. I couldn't get sleep. There was so much of body pain. I don't believe in taking um, painkillers. So I uh, somehow what, that day or two, I passed by taking good rest. But the second uh, uh, 200 kilometer ride was okay. The third where I tested was we rode from Dharwad to Goa, 200 mm. kilometers. And that was pretty much easy. The target was 13 and a half hours to reach from Dharwad to Goa. I reached within 12 hours. So that was a time which, um, which how I prepared myself and got confidence that uh, now that I've done 200 kilometers, I'll be able to do 100 kilometers every day. So that's how I prepared myself for this cycling expedition. That's amazing to know. And uh, I think that practice is very much needed because we all of a sudden, when we fall into some kind of disease, let's say we just go and address it at that time rather than taking that uh, uh, health care even before. Like we eat, we instead of having at least 80% uh, of the healthy food, we rather fill it up with 80% of junk along with the stressful life, with the stressful job, carrying the emotional baggage and also, you know, the physical uh, weightage. Uh, by not having that healthy lifestyle right so uh, yeah. during that course of practice whichever you had during the cycling uh, so I, I completely understand that you have the strong emotional resilience but I also want to know uh, what is that kind of diet you had because and how come how have you actually tied up with the freedom from diabetes uh, organization okay so uh, the diet uh, during my ride is one of the best diets I have ever had in my life Hmm. because uh, when you're riding for 10 hours, the kind of uh, calories that you burn is enormous. And the luxury that you get is you get to eat whatever you want to eat. <laughs> you need not worry about whether will I add on weight or not. Because, yeah. um, and that was the best part. So when I uh, would come via Punjab, I had to, uh, I had uh, got to eat a lot of kulchas, parathas with a lot of butter on it. And then when I came... Uh, to Rajasthan. Uh, in Jodhpur, I had a very um, delightful experience. I got to taste gulab jamun ki sabzi. Gulab uh, jamun ki sabzi? Sabzi, yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's that's okay. very unique. As in, you will not get to eat in the hotel, but uh, in places where it, it has still been cooked there. And I had an eight to nine dishes on the table. So if you ask me, that was the time of my life when I I, uh, I had not to worry about what I'm eating. Just that good calories should go in. I made sure that I'll not have junk, but then all local delicacies were what I was eating. One thing I made sure that um, I was not calorie deficit. What happens is in cycling um, and in running, you know, once you become calorie deficit, you start uh, losing uh, your energy. So that is one thing you need to. Second is mineral deficient. You okay. have to be consistently taking uh, minerals uh, through either diet or uh, as uh, uh, ORS so that you don't have uh, magnesium, calcium deficiency. Uh, then you will have... Uh, so I, I made sure that I was very well hydrated. I had good uh, uh, minerals and uh, good calories in my food. Mm. Okay. So, um, and uh, your, sorry, your question about freedom from freedom. diabetes, I used to work uh, with freedom from diabetes as a, I started working with them as a yoga teacher in the exercise department. And slowly I, I realized the value of how holistic health can help. And I started uh, moving up the uh, ladder in the, in, the, in, in the organization and I became chief protocol officer where I was handling the doctor's team, diet experts team and the operations team. So this is how the journey was, but where I've been using uh, uh, freedom from diabetes and helping is people to join freedom from diabetes uh, through this journey and make smaller changes in their life, uh, such as um, giving up uh, refined food or mm -hmm. let's say having balanced diet. Uh, one of the easiest things that people can follow is take a plate uh, and um, make four quadrants in the plate. One quadrant, uh, you have um, carbs, which is uh, either millets or brown rice. Second is dal, which is protein. Third is uh, salads, which has micro and uh, macronutrients. Fourth is sabzi. And you have one bowl of each of them. The yeah. art here is to eat all of them. And if you are still hungry, you should repeat all of them once again. Okay. The problem is that we eat a lot of rice and a lot of roti, which is carbs. Now, this simple uh, trick has worked so well for many people that uh, the second serving, they would only go half a bowl because they have to eat salads and they have to eat the sabzi as well. So yeah. that helps regulate the intake of uh, the uh, 
uh, the carbs and as well as it gives you balanced nutrition through salad and vegetables. So that's one thing that I suggested people and a lot of people have implemented. So in the K2K journey, we gave this message and many people utilized it. And uh, I, I get back uh, input saying that we've had a great health after you gave these tips. That's amazing to know. And uh, even I heard about millets and I started uh, uh, consuming millets, I think, from 2018, if I can say. And uh, when we were discussing, I came to know it's the same mentor we have about the millets. So uh, can you share to our audience a little more about having the millets and brown rice? Because um, I heard it from many people that uh, millets are we cannot eat it every day. We cannot consume every day. Sometimes it's a lot of heat producing in the body. And uh, at least for our South Indian weather, we cannot have it in uh, like everyday meal or uh, <clears throat> brown rice. If you consume brown rice each and every day, that it won't absorb the uh, nutrients well. So can you just uh, tell about this uh, myths? I can say, can you just explain sure. a little more on this? So, um, I'll give an, I usually give this example. Uh, you are sitting in a cold weather. Let's say you're sitting in Kashmir and it's a very cold um, temperature out there, zero degree. And uh, you've been given two choices. One is a bundle of uh, five kgs of paper uh, mm. to burn and keep yourself warm throughout the night. Mm. The other option you have is five kg of coal to keep yourself warm, coal. Uh, and now the option is, I what? which one will you use? Will you use paper to keep yourself warm or will you use coal? The answer usually comes coal because coal burns throughout the night. It will keep you warm. Okay. Paper burns very quickly. So okay. the same thing happens with high carb rich foods. If you eat processed um, rice, which is done with the polishing, there's no polish. The polishing has been done and then the nutrients are all lost and there's no fiber. It burns like paper. It gives you energy quickly. But look at it. How our body is made. Our body is made to slowly get the energy and utilize it. It's just like opening floodgates and then making sure that two months you have all the water in the world and then the rest 10 months if you don't have water, what happens to our body? The same way, uh, millets and brown rice are rich in fiber. So what is the work of fiber? Fiber is like coal, which burns slowly, releases energy slowly. So that your body gets its quota of energy spread across four to six hours rather than being released in one or two hours. So that is very good. The other part of uh, fiber is that as you have good fibery food, it also helps you in increasing your gut health, which is the stomach, the intestine. So that health also improves. If you don't have fiber, if you have only dairy products, uh, there's a lot of... Uh, um, it it decays there. It doesn't go out of your body. Um, the the biggest problem people have is constipation. They're not able to pass their motion. So fiber helps doing this. So foods like uh, millets and uh, brown rice helps uh, in regulating the energy rate with which the energy is released. And second biggest benefit is that it helps in um, sh making sure that the fiber improves your gut health. So these are the uh, the, the top two uh, benefits of millets. There are many, including that of that has varied mineral content and um, the making sure that you get all what you need for your body. Mm, that's true. And uh, Veer, if I can, if I may ask you, so um, we have five types of millets, like which we commonly use in in uh, like as a replacement of rice, right? The white rice, which we normally consume. So can you explain a little more of it and how can we actually include it in our daily lifestyle so that we uh, don't uh, like we actually make it as a habit and uh, uh, like slowly start uh, moving out from the white rice and the refined food, I can say. Sure. Uh, so there are many millets. In fact, we've been growing a lot of millets. Mm. Dr. Kadar has done a lot of research and then I've yeah. seen, I uh, have recognized five, five millets, mm -hmm. um, which help, uh, which have good uh, fiber content. And that's when he professes these five millets. Um, it has uh, uh, the brown top millet, the foxtail millet, little millet, barnyard millet and kodo millet. So these are the five millets that uh, Dr. Khadar suggests. And each has its own, each grows in certain areas and it has its own because where do we get all the minerals? It comes from the soil. 
Correct. So it in it includes what kind of soil it is and what crop is good there, and then you get those nutrients. Mm. Some people who are not used to have uh, fiber rich foods might feel a bit uncomfortable to start with. My invitation to them is to mix that with uh, have it for one meal a day, or if you're still not uh, comfortable. Mix it with rice and then eat. Even the Dr. Khadar suggests not to mix millets. But to train your body to accept millets, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like training somebody, a kid, of how to do something new. So you, you, you mix that something which they are familiar with to something which they are not familiar. So white rice and then a bit of millet. So And then you start getting the taste of it. It has to be an acquired taste. Over a period of time, you acquire the taste and then you start liking it. So the best thing that you could start doing with millets is have millets uh, as bisivile bath or uh, khichdi uh, where you overcook it and make it so soft that your digestive system need not work hard to digest it. So that's the first thing that you start and then put a lot of vegetables into it so that it becomes interesting with the varied colors and aroma. So that's how you have to start doing it. And then once you are used for one time, one meal, probably then switch it to two meals a day. And uh, many people um, whom I see have this psychological barrier that it is not uh, suiting them, but uh, it's, it's, it's just psychological. You start eating, you start relishing millets, you start knowing that it is good for your health, good for environment, then things uh, happen. So in my case, in 2015, I started having millets. Not many people knew about millets outside the farming world. But when I started talking about uh, this to people, many people started using it, started uh, gaining their optimum weight by having millets every day. And I see that now they are saying that, okay, whatever we had as an issue was a psyche issue. Now that's done with. So that's that would be my suggestion. Start small and then slowly increase it. And then you will see the best health uh, that you could have is by having millets and uh, fiber rich food yeah that's true because uh, even i remember the days in 2018 when i was in bangalore uh, my mother had suggested me uh, to start having millets because it it's good for the uh, reproductive health and like for all overall well-being right so um, i think uh, like as you told we can start having it in one meal so i used to prepare this busy busy levat so i used to love that and that's when i started falling in love and i used to prepare dosa um, idli and all kind of things so it made my life so easy and uh, i was able to eat that healthy uh, food and it became a habit for me over a period of time and uh, here uh, when you told about diabetes in specific so I would like to understand how, uh, you know, at least a brief about how this holistic health will, uh, using the millets, can cure the diabetes. Okay. Uh, so a diabetes um, is a <clears throat> psychosomatic uh, disorder. It's not a disease. Okay. So there's a lot of psyche involved as in, a lot of stress if it is there, then it also increases diabetes but the main thing is um, the food that we take and one of the myth is that uh, if you eat sweet you will get diabetes that's not the case okay so once you are diabetic obviously you should reduce the kind of direct sweet you will have uh, my invitation to everyone who is watching this uh, if you are not a diabetic if you are still young and uh, want to keep diabetes at bay just make sure that you adopt uh, right eating habits eat at the right time which you fix because your body knows when it is when it has to accept when when it can expect more calories so eat at regular intervals and second is uh, if you can go back to what your uh, forefathers were eating that's the best diet for us because we came from that region of the country where that diet was there and now incorporate millets into it now for in addition to having millets, which I just mentioned, why it is beneficial, have at least 150 minutes of exercise every week in the form of yoga or running. Walking, I wouldn't say it as an exercise because it doesn't um, pump up your, uh, your heart. Uh, do something which pumps up your heart a bit more than just walking. So if you are active for 150 minutes, at least if I'm, I'm assuming that if you're a 
um, busy person, then this is what you can do. Uh, so the diet part, which is fiber rich food exercise. And third thing, um, which uh, Dr. Srinidhi, you, I want you to add on to this is how can one be with themselves and peaceful with themselves? So with, with soulful living, uh, that you are practicing and helping others. Uh, I would want you to add that third portion so that it completes diet, exercise, and stress. So how can one do that? Yeah, actually, it's a very good question. And uh, I did not expect this question. So um, I remember the day uh, when I had to uh, go to the test uh, during my pregnancy, somewhere around sixth month. There, my glucose level was around 330. It was all of a sudden, not sixth month, eighth month. So I had to travel. It was a peak COVID time. I had to take the permission and uh, travel back to Hyderabad where my parents and in-laws were. So uh, at the time, I've seen the spike of 330 just because of the stress. Otherwise, it was very normal when I was in Bangalore. And once uh, I had to go for the uh, checkup, as I had to visit the new doctor, then the spike was too much and it actually bothered me so much. Because it was not with respect to food, it was not with respect to exercise, but it was all with respect to the mindset. I was taking in all the, you know, junk, all the unhealthy thoughts, the emotions. I was just cooking up stories in my own head. I was going through a lot of emotional suffocation. I can say there was a lot of emotional condition that had been going on in my head. And when you told psychosomatic thing it is all about that I was feeling in my head so much and the kind of agitation the kind of pain the kind of uh, mood swings and everything had actually shown up in that graph where it was 330 so from then I really understood that it's just not with the physical exercise it's not about you know having the right food alone but it's also to keep your emotional health very well we won't be, you know, we think that all of a sudden we think that this is happening. This person is like this. This person is like this. Or at least we blame on some situation that just because of this, I'm facing this. Just because of this, I'm facing that issue. But when we observe, it's all kind of happens in patterns, right? Any Anything, any pain, whichever we go through emotionally. So that's when I understood that there is one thing which was bothering me. And when I started addressing that issue, then my uh, glucose levels again started to come back to normal. Otherwise, every day I have to prick and test uh, my glucose levels. And every every day, you know, it was the first time in my life that I had to be really very careful about my food. Otherwise, it was not like that for me because I used to exercise. I used to have good food, whichever I like. Then I thought that uh, it's all about uh, the mental well-being as well. We should really take care of that emotional well-being. Otherwise, those emotions which turn into the negative uh, aspects, the deep, uh, the shallow emotions or the negative emotions, they sit in our body as a disease. And we all get some or the other kind of disease. It could be headache, it could be dry eyes, or it could be diabetes, it could be BP, it could be you know uh, severe pain in the legs, it could be burning sensation in the feet, or not like you can name whatever disease you, uh, we, we know about so i felt that it is very important to also have the balance of the emotional well-being so that is my uh, answer for it fantastic and, and uh, what work have you been doing with uh, soulful living for women now uh, so initially as i told i had been through certain experiences uh, when I was carrying, especially because that's where my entire focus on my own self. Otherwise, I was like completely career oriented person. I was just doing my work, reaching the milestones, getting the results, tangible results and all that stuff. But when I was carrying, I had to take care of my emotional well-being as well. Because I used to listen to more of the chants and meditation and all that stuff. So that time I came to know that, uh, you know, it's very much needed for other women as well who are going through such things. Because as I told, the graph just showed the number in that report just shown up. Then after that also post-pregnancy, uh, it's like very much needed for any women to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, the nurturing won't happen well for herself because of the change that has happened in her body. And she won't be able to give her best to the child as well. She won't be able to treat them in a better way. She shows all her agitation or all the inhibitions on the child. So that's when I have uh, started these things and I've trained more than 1000 women till now. And I teach uh, mostly on the emotional resilience, how to build their emotional resilience so that they have the harmony in the work and personal lives and they don't need to compromise on any of these aspects, health, relationship, career and money. So all these four areas will be uh, the best. 
So that is what I do with the people who come to me. Fantastic. I think this has been a great uh, uh, interaction because uh, our interests are so intertwined uh, mm -hmm. and health is something which is very common. I really appreciate uh, you taking your time and interviewing me. Thank you so much for that. Thanks, Savir. It has been really good interaction and it was little like uh, it was a last minute thing, but it is actually worth it and uh, learned so much from you. And thank you so much for being here. See Same you. here. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.